I, I really don't think anybody expected anything different. Uh, YouTube, team keep it clean. Welcome to December. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, the Ravens had a presser today, which featured John Harbaugh. I didn't catch his part because I just woke up. Alejandro Villanueva. I didn't catch that part. Well, I caught some of it. And he showed his respect to the Steelers. And that one thing that I did love that he said, because um, they were asking him about little bits and pieces about Steelers and Ravens rivalry. And he said, I ain't going to say too much because I know stuff gets taken out of context, especially in that other city. So he already know what time it is. Um, and then I think somebody else spoke too, but I, I just, I didn't catch anybody else. But I did catch our guy Lamar. Um, oh, and then some bits and pieces from John Harbaugh that I did hear when I was waking up. He just was showing a lot of respect to Pittsburgh. He was showing a lot of respect uh, to Mike Tomlin. And I mean, he got no choice but to. Like they have gone back and forth with Steelers getting the best of the Ravens, Ravens getting the best of the Steelers. Um, and it's always just a classic. Well, usually it's a classic. Sometimes it can be a little nasty, but they got a lot of classics. Even when they have guys missing, they got players not playing, it's always something serious. And one way that I really saw uh, Harbaugh's respect for the Steelers is when they asked him about Deontay, uh, Deontay Johnson. No, Deontay Thompson. Deontay Johnson. Deontay Thompson was the one who used to play for the Ravens back then. Who I think he went to the, he was a Florida Gator. A little fast wide receiver. But anyway, um, they asked Harbaugh about him, and, and he was like, oh, yeah, you always got to watch for 18. And, and the way that he spoke about the receivers and their skill sets and Fryer Muth, too, he added him in there and Chase Claypool. Um, you, you could tell he's been doing his homework. Well, I mean, he doesn't really got to do his homework. He played them twice a year. But you could tell that he just really appreciates Pittsburgh's players, um, the way that they do things over there, uh, because this is very similar to the way the Ravens do things. Two very successful franchises. Um, and they usually do right by their players. They take care of business. Um, things may be ugly, but they, they get it done. Anyway, to Lamar Jackson. Um, he says straight up, ain't, ain't no excuses for that poor performance. There are absolutely none. And like I said, I don't think anybody would ever expect him to make any excuses anyway. Like, you're never going to hear Lamar be like, oh, man, it's because... Oh, uh, because I wasn't feeling good. That's why I had a bad game. Oh, well, because I was injured. It's because that's how I had a bad game. Oh, man, because this dude dropped the pass. Cause that's why I had a bad game. Oh, man, because you're never going to hear that. You hear from fans, but not from him. Um, and I know one of my guys was like uh, in the comment section. He said that he said, oh, well, those with those interceptions. He said nobody talking about how it's windy. And I saw that. And I was thinking, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no win throwing no four picks, even three picks. Uh, th that that wasn't the win, so I uh, I can't buy that one. I I, I can't. And then again, uh, people have um tried to uh, blame again one of those interceptions, the, the, the Rashad Bateman one. That's one that that's more on Rashad Bateman. But um, some people have tried to blame it, like the one the the tip that Mark Andrews when he tried to tip it up to himself and tried to make the catch. They try to blame that one on him. No, that's that's Lamar. That's Lamar. And then, of course, the other two, again, had Mark Andrews right in between two defenders. He had space. Just You got to hit him right there. But Lamar decided to <laughs> hit him right there. Uh, and he ended up throwing it right to the uh, the cornerback. And then, of course, um, the other one where, oh, yeah, the safety was just sitting on it. Just sitting on it. And he still made that throw. So he talked about, he said he played like a rookie. And okay, well, yeah, I'll, I mean, you ain't even throw four interceptions in your rookie year. So I, I can't even say that. But we got what he meant. Um, he said there were bad reads, bad throws, all of that. And, and what I appreciated about what he said today is he said that he lets those bad games fester. So he lets those bad games sit and he thinks about them for a couple of days and he's just like, it makes him sick. And he doesn't want to have a repeat performance of that. Um, he talked about how he went over film uh, right away to see how he can improve. Uh, yeah, we would expect that from franchise quarterback. Uh, yeah, that's all. That's just not the, nothing but the expectations, man. Um, they talked about Steelers and their record. Uh, what he expects from them um, based off of their record. He said, you don't pay attention to records. Because it's any given Sunday. And I mean... <laughs> You look at the Dolphins game a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we believe that. It's definitely any given Sunday, for sure. Um, 
with somebody asked him about uh, all the blowback that Miles Garrett got from just showing respect to Lamar after that touchdown. I know a lot of people just, they really didn't like that. Me, personally, I loved it. I always talk about how game recognized game. And I always love, like, even when you play sports, um, whether you play them competitively, I know that's a little different or recreationally. Um, when somebody, like I know for me personally, playing recreationally, if you like playing basketball or something, or even playing football, somebody catch you slipping and they get you. And in, in, the, in the moment, it's like, oh, man, they got me. But right after, I'm like, oh, that, that was nice, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. And for Miles Garrett to be able to do that on a professional level, uh, that speaks volume to his character. Uh, and that speaks volume to just his humility as well. So shout out to Miles Garrett for just, again, appreciating Lamar. Lamar appreciating him. Now, they also talked about Jadavian Clowney on that same play because it was on a Mark Andrews touchdown play. Uh, they talked about Jadavian Clowney, how he took his helmet and slammed it to the ground because he was upset. You can understand that, too, but and Jadavian Clowney got that, that, that late hit uh, on Lamar. Now, there were some uh, the late hits in this game, in the Browns-Ravens game. They were kind of garbage on both sides. No Tyus Bowser, he got called for one. It was like, uh, Jadavian Clowney, he got called for that one. And it's just, it's just so ticky-tacky, man. But one thing I did appreciate about it actually being called for Lamar is that we're starting to see this a little bit more. And the league is actually, seem, it's, it took them, took them forever, but it seems like, as if they're actually treating him like a quarterback. It's probably because they know Lamar is money. But anyway, um, he talked about how Jadavian Clowney told him that he loved him. He told him that he loved him. So ain't no ill will, ain't no beef, ain't no problem. And he's already given respect publicly to Lamar before when he was with the Seahawks. He said, hey, he said, ain't nobody like him. Nobody like him. He said he could make all the throws, make the runs, he could do it all. So Jadavian Clowney already gave Lamar his flowers before. So this ain't nothing new. Um, he was asked uh, about what's it going to take to play more consistently as an offense. Uh, and Lamar said he doesn't have an answer for it. He, he said they just had to play better football with whatever calls are called. Shout out to Giro. Um, he was also asked about his unique skill set. Like, where, where did it come from? And he said that he thinks that it probably came from tag. And he said one-on-one, -on -one, uh, wasn't nobody touching him. And he... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he says that that's a game because and that that kind of took me back a little bit too i'm like wow tag wow that that ooh, that takes me back a long time ago i i like completely forgot about that game tag um but yeah that's where you just you try not to get touched I mean, right now if we play tag i don't know i'm gonna be out there looking like Le'Veon bell because I, I i can move now not a speed we, it's, i can get it back but anyway we ain't worried about me right now um, he said that he feels like he is 100% this week because somebody asked him, oh, well, well, did you feel sick last week? Or, uh, he said he feels 100% this week. And last week, still, he repeated it. There are no excuses. Zero. Uh, he said he really put his defense in, in bad spots with all those interceptions. Uh, and yes, <laughs> trust us, we, we know. We know. But the defense, give them credit. They've been dealing with this all year, really. And it, as much as we get on, uh, we got on wink about adjustments, and, and it, it was still an issue, but this is something that the defense has been dealing with literally all season long, being put in bad positions from the offense. And even on the times where they do good, offense will start off slow, start off slow, start off slow, start off slow. Now, it's funny, somebody in the comment section made a really good point uh, about Ravens and this team. Because, again, we, 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 despite them being 8-3, and three, we, we always acknowledge, we, we continue to acknowledge what their issues are. What they do good at, what they do bad at, and everything in between. Um, but somebody made a really good point uh, in the comment section from a video yesterday. They said that, man, this Ravens team, they're 8-3, and three, and they haven't even peaked yet. And I was like, oh, that's true. <laughs> they, oof, I, and I will hope that this is not a peak. <laughs> this can't be a peak the way that they playing there's no way uh, but that was just a really good point really good observation uh he said that there were opportunities where the offensive line they did protect him um and he just he missed the opportunities and that's actually true because I, I have seen a couple of different film guys uh via youtube via twitter point out some things where sometimes when lamar had good protection but he just made a bad throw 
And then the, the sack from Miles Garrett. Maybe that was Lamar showing love to him because Lamar, he ran right into that sack. I think he was trying to step up in the pocket, but he he ran right into it. Miles Garrett was like, oh, y'all giving out free sacks like this? Oh, yeah, I take it all day. I'm trying to break that sack record because he, he might end up doing it. Hopefully, he don't have any more on, on the Ravens when we play them again in two weeks, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, he said that him and Baker, they super close. They they always asking about each other after the games. You always hear the little sound bites and stuff. Uh, Baker asking about his mom. Lamar asking about his brother and stuff. Uh, he said that that goes back to their Heisman days. Now uh, he also talked about that one hand catch by Mark Andrews. He said that was all Mark, money Mark. He said that ball wasn't on the money, but money Mark made it look like it was, and he made it happen. Uh, so shout out to uh, Lamar. He got no choice. Like <laughs> you got no choice. But to have a bounce back game after this, like you, you go out four interceptions, and yeah, one of them might not have been on you, but hey, it is what it is. It goes on your stat sheet. Four interceptions, and while context is everything, still four interceptions. Even if even if we took it everything in the context, which you have to, you can say three interceptions. Three interceptions. That's terrible. That's El Terriblade. That's Basura. That's just bad. Mal. Shout out to Spanish. Um, so yeah, with, with Lamar, he, you can't, well, you technically can, but you can't get no worse than that. And again, like we always say, one bad game does not define a career. Again, people, I know people have been like, oh man, Lamar, he's regressing. He's regressing. He has had a bad, his last two games have been bad. They've been bad. Dolphins. And Browns, they've been bad. Has the season been bad for him? No. He even had some throws where it's like, whoa, hold up now, Lamar. Then he had some throws where he's like, oh, ooh, hold up now, Lamar. So it's been a good mix, but it's been a lot more good than bad. Um, Again, it, for anybody questioning if Lamar is worth it, if he's worth the bread, just stop. There's no point. There's no point. He, he's worth that and more Because again Easiest answer to that Where would these Ravens be without Lamar Now against the Browns this last week I don't know They, they might have been a little further But minus that Browns game where, where would Seriously though Where would the Ravens be without Lamar 8-3? and three? No Not a chance Not even close The, the record it, it wouldn't even be reversed It wouldn't even be 3-8 and eight. It'd be worse than that Straight up It'd be worse than that. Because they're no way. No way. Um, so he's definitely blank check. Deserves a blank check. Uh, but he de definitely does have to step it up. For sure. Got to step up his game big time. Got to. A lot rides on his shoulders. And hey, that's part of being a franchise quarterback. It's going to be a lot on you. Um, and hopefully we can continue. Ravens can continue getting help. Uh, from other areas of the team besides Lamar. Now, he, of course, he doesn't always do it all. And again, Brown's game is a great example of it. Um, but he's he's got to be better. It, it shouldn't be a reason. He shouldn't be the reason why other teams. Eyelash went in my eye. He shouldn't be the reason why other teams are hanging around with the Ravens. He shouldn't be the reason for that. Uh, so, yeah, watch that game. That game is in the past now. It's done. Now it's Pittsburgh time. Now, uh, last thing before we get out of here, one of my guys, Grimy Intellect, he um he made a very interesting point, and it sounded crazy, but then when you think about it, I was like, uh, I don't know if this coaching staff would do that. If I don't even know, I didn't even know really how to respond to it exactly. But he talked about how uh, with Lamar Jackson early in this year, he had a presser. Where he talked about um, he doesn't want they they don't want as a team they don't want to peak too early, uh, and he feels like they they've peaked too early at times, uh, and he doesn't want that to happen this year. And again, we know they certainly have not peaked at all this year. We can we can see that that's clear. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but Grimey talked about how it, 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 it's a possibility that the Ravens are playing down to their competition intentionally because they just they, they don't want to bring it all out yet now um 
I, I, I know that a lot of y'all, when you first hear that, you could think like, what? That that doesn't make any sense. And like I said, it does sound very crazy initially. And I'm trying to find the exact comment because I, I, I really don't want to butcher it. I really don't want to um, I don't want to change it up. I'm, I'm trying to find exactly what he wrote. Uh, because, like I said, it was a very, very interesting comment. Had me scratching my head. Um, and I was just like, oh, okay. But then at the same time, I was like, oh, okay. So I know I'm going to find it. It got to be in one of our last two videos. Um, I'm on the, oh, there it goes. All right, here he goes. He said, verbatim now. He said, I've been thinking. I just want to document it somewhere. So he put it in the comment section. And now it'll be documented in this video. So it'll be there forever. He said, I know Baker and the Browns were injured, but aside from that, I think this team literally is playing down to their opponents on purpose. <laughs> well, I think uh, the Bengals, they want to have a word. But anyway, he said, I don't really think Lamar and the team took that don't peak too soon model to heart. Um, oh, no, he said, I really think Lamar and the team took that don't peak too soon model to heart. Uh, the defense that faced the Browns looked completely different from the rest of the season. How they were flying to the ball. The effort looks different. I also think, oh, now this is where it got really interesting, too. I also think they have been saving their key assets like a Jimmy Smith, Tyson Williams, and Brandon Williams. Those who we think are in dog houses. Well, with Tyson Williams, that for sure. Um, we do think he's in a dog house. Jimmy Smith, ain't no dog house for him. But could they be preserving him, preserving his body for postseason? That's something because... We, I hadn't heard about any injury with Jimmy Smith, and then he just got to missing. Even when he was uh, healthy and not on the injury list, not out of the game, they, like in the Dolphins game, Tay-Tay came out for a little bit, and instead of going to Jimmy, they went to Chris Westry. So he's been on the sideline just sitting there with his jersey and stuff, so it's been like, oh, okay. So I don't know. This is what, like I said, it, it initially it sounds very crazy, but then when you really think about it and look at it, it's like, hold up. It sounds crazy enough to where it could actually. Anyway. Um, he said, uh, I know it sounds crazy and doesn't make sense, but I really think that they might be saving their peak for the playoffs and throwing intentional smoke screens, especially <laughs> the coordinators. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know. I, I remember back in 2019, uh, again, Ravens 14 and two and on a 12 game win streak. Awesome. Amazing. Wonderful dream season. That's why it just, it wasn't real. A lot of us thought, Oh, Greg Roman, he's saving plays for the playoffs. He's saving plays for the playoffs. Then when the playoffs came, it was like, oh, no, he, he ain't saving nothing for the playoffs. Um, and that's why whenever I hear somebody say that the Ravens may be saving plays for the playoffs, I immediately shut it down. And I say, no, they're not. They're not. There's, there's, there's no way. Um, and I feel like you can't save play, plays for the playoffs because what if you don't even get there? Like, not that you got to show your full hand in regular season, but you got to bring it. You got to bring it so you can even have a chance to be in the playoffs. So I just, the whole saving plays for the playoffs and all, playing down to their competition intentionally, ah, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's, I don't know. But we'll find out over these next six, the last six games. I'd say these next six games, but these last six games since we had the end of the season. But either way, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And we're going to see how this thing goes. I appreciate y'all rocking with us. We out.